Hello, my name is Nikki Salzman, and I am the National Programs and Public Relations Coordinator for the Jewish War Veterans, and I manage our national social media sites. The National Office encourages all of you to begin using social media for your posts, departments, and echelons. This workshop is intended to lay the foundations you need to set up your own social media pages. You may be asking yourself, we have a website. Why do we need social media? Or does it make sense to have both a website and social media? These social media sites are intended to be a supplement to a website, not a substitute. Why do I say that? Well, social media and websites are different kinds of communication platforms. A website is a stable platform where you're fully in control of the message you send out to the world. In a way, it's like an e-billboard that lets you project exactly the information that you want people to know. It can also serve as a hub for your various resources on the internet. For example, a department website may link to various post websites as well as social media sites like Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. In contrast, social media is a two-way interaction between you and your followers. You don't have 100% control over what's said in social media because your followers have the ability to give their input and add their voice to the conversation. It's a great opportunity for you to network online and attract potential new members and supporters. As you can see from this slide, there are a lot of websites out there that fall under the definition of social media. It's impossible to maintain an active presence on all of these sites, and more importantly, all of them are not appropriate for the Jewish war veterans. At the national level, we're active on three sites, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. These are three of the largest social media sites on the internet, and we feel they are the sites that are most likely to help us reach our target audience of new members and supporters. Very briefly, I'd like to go over some demographics just to give you an idea of why getting on these sites is so important. 66% of online adults are connected to one or more social media site. That's the majority of the online adult audience, which emphasizes just how important it is for JWV to be represented in social media. As you can see, there are a lot of people on the top five social media sites. When this infographic was made in May 2012, Facebook had 901 million users. Twitter, the second largest site, had 555 million users. Those are huge numbers, and we want to tap into that audience. The next slide shows how many visits these sites get per month. That's the number of times people go on the site, not the total number of unique visitors. You can see that people are constantly visiting and interacting with these sites. To flesh these figures out a bit, for Facebook, 845 million of its users are considered active, and its users visit the site an average of 40 times per month. On Twitter, 36% of its users tweet at least one time per day. People spend a lot of time on these sites. Facebook is a big leader with 405 minutes by the average user per month. That's a lot of minutes spent on one website. As this last demographic slide shows, there are many different age ranges on these sites. It's not just people who are in their 20s. People of all ages are on these social media sites. That's going to be great for capturing your current base as well as expanding into other age ranges. Before you start using social media, I want you to think about the difference between using it for yourself versus using it for JWV. If you create a site for your post department or echelon, you are representing the national organization. Remember to think before you put things online. Don't post items or comments that are inflammatory or violate our national rules. Always be nice. Occasionally you may have someone visit your site who says something that upsets you. You have the ability to hide comments. Hiding an item is an important management function for Facebook. It allows you to take a post that may be inappropriate for some reason and make it hidden from most viewers. The person who posted that item cannot tell that their post has been hidden. When they visit the page, they'll see their post. This can be a great way to remove inappropriate content without inadvertently offending someone. You can also delete inappropriate comments and you have the ability to diffuse the situation by just responding in a nice way. Social media is not the place to have a big fight because everybody on the internet can see it. Now, we're going to discuss how these social media sites function, starting with the largest one, Facebook. 
There are three different kinds of Facebook pages that you can have, which I'm going to address. There's a difference between each of these pages, and only one type is really appropriate for you to use to represent JWV. A Facebook profile is what you would use just for yourself. It has to represent a person. If you make a Facebook profile for JWV, you run the risk of being deleted for violating Facebook's terms of service. The profile is only intended for people. You can also create a group. Groups tend to be private. They are often run more like message boards. You may want to consider having a group for a post, but it's not an effective way to get your post or department out there to the members of the public who have never heard of JWV. We recommend that you create a page. Pages are designed specifically for organizations. They're public. Anyone can see them, and other organizations, like our national organization, can interact with them. All around, it's a better way to project to those 901 million Facebook users. When you create a page, you do it directly from your own Facebook user profile. This means that you have to join Facebook in order to create a page. You can have multiple administrators for a single page. However, we recommend using no more than three administrators per page. You also have the ability to manage multiple organization pages from one user profile. When you name your page, make sure to include our full name, Jewish War Veterans of the USA. People outside of our organization aren't necessarily familiar with the acronym JWV. Always, whether it's social media or something in the offline world, use our full name. Let's take a look at a real Facebook page. This is a screenshot of the National JWV Facebook page. There are a lot of elements that make up an organization's page. The most important part for when someone new comes onto your page is the cover photo. It's the first thing that they see. You want to have something exciting that in just one moment tells the story of your post or department. Right now, National is using this great photo from a post in Albany, New York. It's of one of our members giving a poppy to a police officer. The reason I chose it is because it's a member going out, engaging in one of our programs, and being active. It's not someone being still. It's not staged. It's us going out into the community and being awesome. It's my hope that if you create a post or a department page, you would, whenever possible, illustrate JWV members engaging in the activities that make us a great veteran service organization. The next element is the profile photo. On the national JWV page, we use our national logo. It's our recommendation that you use the JWV logo because that's what's going to show up whenever you're posting on anyone else's page, whenever you write something on your own page, and whenever people see our posts in their Facebook home feed. We want people to see that logo and instantly recognize us. We want brand recognition. For people to see the logo and think, yes, this must be from the Jewish War Veterans. The other major element is the Facebook posts themselves. This is what will show up when people, in Facebook terminology, like your page. Your page will show up in their home feeds, which is what people see when they first log on to the site. So what does that mean? When someone has already visited your page, once they like your page, when they log into their own Facebook page, and you post something, they're going to see it in their home feeds without having to go to your physical post or department or Echelon's Facebook page. When it comes to posting content, there's a lot of different material that you can put out there. Going back to the idea of storytelling, you want people to, who visit your page to see the story of our organization. And posting content can be a way to achieve that aim. So, for example, what veterans issues are we concerned about? You can put news articles up about those issues, you can list facts about the issues, and you can detail how they affect our veterans. You can post information about when your post is meeting, what kind of events you're putting on, and what the department is doing. You can broadcast information about the military in general. You can post on issues that are important to Jews. You can put out photos from posts and department activities. Another great strategy is to ask questions. If, for example, most of your followers are people who are part of your post, 
You can ask questions like, what kind of events do you want to see? What issues are important to you when it comes to veterans' causes? What organizations do you think that we should support? Asking a question can be a great way to get interaction on your page. The more interaction you have on your page, the more likely it is that people who are friends of your followers will see JWV and might become curious about us. You may be wondering, how often should you post content? You don't want to bombard people. You don't want to post every minute of every day. But you also don't want to post so infrequently that people forget that you have a page. When you start out, try once a week and see how that goes. For the national page, I usually post at least once a day. Sometimes I'll post multiple times a day. If you find five pieces of interesting information, if you can, space that information out so that you have content for several days. Why am I making that recommendation? Well, if you post those five things at once, then the first item will get overshadowed by the second item. You want each thing that you post to have a little moment to shine on Facebook. One of the cool things about an organization page is that you can interact with other organizations. There are lots of organizations on Facebook. In fact, the majority of organizations out there have Facebook pages at this point. So you, as JWV, can interact with the Army's Facebook page or with any of the military branches' Facebook pages. You can interact with the pages for Jewish organizations in your community. If you're hosting an event with another organization, you can interact with their page as a way to cross-promote the event. What does that mean? For those of you who are more familiar with Facebook, I'm going to use some lingo here. You can like the posts of another organization. You can comment on their posts. You can do something called sharing a post. For example, an organization like Jews in Green, which is an informal online group for in-service Jewish men and women, sometimes posts interesting content, which is relevant to our organization. I will sometimes take Jews in Green's content and share it, which means it shows up on the National Jewish War Veterans Facebook page. That exposes what they've put online to our followers. But the most important component in this is that this interaction encourages Jews in Green to share our content with their followers. It's a great group for us to interact with since their followers, who are in-service Jewish men and women, are exactly the people that we would like to reach out to and have join our organization. The great thing with Facebook is that you can put events on your page. Now, I know that all of you list your events in your local Jewish papers. You try to get it into any local military papers you may have in your community. You probably send out press releases to the local media, email the information to people, or send letters. Using Facebook is just another way to invite people and raise awareness for your event. All the information for your event can be housed on Facebook. You can invite people to the event directly through an event page, and your attendees can share the event or invite their own friends through your event page. As your event develops, you can put photos on the page, you can update your attendees by sending a message directly through the event page. After the event, you can also thank attendees directly through the event page and post photos on your main page, which is a nice way to close the loop on your event. Another nice thing about Facebook is that it has very dynamic analytics available, which allows you to see who is interested in your page. When you look at your posts, you can see exactly how many people saw your content. You can see how many people liked your post and how many people shared your post with their own followers. Through the administration panel, you can really drill down into the analytics. This is information that can only be viewed by page administrators. You can see information like how many people viewed your post, how many of their people viewed the post after they shared it with followers. You can see the gender and the age of the people who come to your page. You can see where the people you reach are located in the world. Are you getting people in the United States or somewhere else in the world? What cities are you popular in? On the national page, not surprisingly, most of our engagement comes from the U.S., followed by Israel. Our top three cities are Los Angeles, New York, New York, and Washington, D.C.